that really bother me and just spring up out of nowhere where I think about them and go, why, why didn't I get it? Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be about all the Hermes bags that I really wanted to buy um, and they got away. Yep, they got away. They either sold way too quickly, um, pretty much that's the case. They either sold way too quickly or I wasn't in the position to buy them just yet and I was waiting to buy them and then they sold out. So these are the bags that I actually um, it's not like I regret buying them because really in reality uh, the timing just didn't work out for me it was obviously fate it wasn't meant to be but these are the bags that kind of like stick in my mind as to man I wish I was able to buy that or I wish I had gotten that bag or I wish I was fast enough to be able to buy it just those sorts of things so these are the ones that stick in my mind because obviously um, in the luxury community uh, you guys as bag lovers yourself you probably would have had bags that you wanted to buy and you were unable to buy but we've all had those kind of um, situations these are just the ones that really irk me like it annoys me that I, I missed out on that opportunity and I haven't forgotten them to this very day and there are going to be uh, three in the very like in the top three that really irk me the most and I look back and regret that I didn't find a way to be able to buy it or I didn't pull the trigger on it that kind of thing um, so first and foremost if you aren't already subscribed to my channel and you do like all things luxury then I would love if you would hit that subscribe button below and also the bell so you can be notified when I upload new videos I upload on a Wednesday and on a weekend on US standard time now before I get into this video um, let me just say that take this with a grain of salt I'm gonna probably be a little bit melodramatic about the bags that I missed out on and really in reality it's not a big deal but we are a part of the luxury community this is a luxury channel I do talk about luxury goods fashion handbags all that sort of stuff and a bit of lifestyle as well so if, if you're coming here to watch a luxury video and you're not into luxury and you can't appreciate the, the light-hearted humor that comes hand in hand with the luxury uh, journey and the experience, then just click out now because I'm gonna be a little bit melodramatic about some things, but like I said, in reality, it's not a big deal. And we're gonna start off with the Mini Lindy. So the Mini Lindy, uh, if you watch my vlogs, I have spoken of quite a few times that I keep missing out on this bag. It has become available in quite a lot of colors um, on the Australian website, and I haven't wanted to get all of them. There has just been some particular colors that I have wanted that I keep missing out on, and I either miss out on it by minutes or there's a technicality on the website and they've added the like you can see the item but you can't actually add it to cart like that happens and then you've got to keep waiting and waiting and waiting to add it to cart later and um, the first one being green pearl that was the first color I actually wanted and missed out on and it was pretty much when the mini Lindy just launched um, then there was Itan, which was um, a little bit more recent actually I think I spoke about this in one of my recent vlogs that I missed out on the Atan mini Lindy and it was while I was cooking dinner and then there was also another one in Jean Amber this was probably this was before the Atan one again um, missed out on it it was too slow or whatever and then there was another one that actually was on the Canadian website because I do have a friend in Canada she's actually my um, my best friend she was my um, my bridesmaid at my wedding and she lives in Canada so I could actually buy from the Canadian website and ship it to her and there was a gold mini Lindy that became available and this was um, a case of it became available I think it was really early in the morning and I happened to wake up to um, to feed my newborn and I seen that it was coming up on the website but I couldn't add it to cart yet and I kept refreshing refreshing and it wasn't coming up as add to cart yet so unfortunately I pretty much had to resign to the fact that I wasn't going to be able to sit there for you know an hour and keep refreshing the web page and seeing it makes it all the more annoying like when you see that it's there on the web page and it's the color that you want and you can't buy it it's like mm, it's how frustrating is that and you know you're ready to buy it too that is when it's really annoying it's like you're ready to buy it you want to buy it but you can't buy it because it's sold out or there's a technicality and you can't buy it and you know that sort of thing. On to the next two that are also Hermes website bags. So these are the only other two website bags that I have on my list that I missed out on. And the first one being a Picoton 18 and it was in a combination of gold and rose azalea. So I have never seen this combination before. It's I think it's called the Casa. Fortunately I missed out of it. It was on the European website. Again with the European website I'm able to buy from there and then I ship it to um, my personal shopper who's based in Italy. So yeah that was annoying and then the other one that was on the European website as well was the um it was the her bag 31 in the retonne style which is a new style that they've brought back in the Pegasus 
um, I think it's an embroidered print or it might be a print. I'm not 100% sure if it's embroidered or printed on. But yeah, it's got the Pegasus, the Hermes Pegasus, which is, um, you know, it's a classic symbol for Hermes as well. It's well known, the Pegasus. So that was a beautiful bag. I really wanted, to, wanted that bag. And with that one, again, I was actually too slow. I was too slow. Um, it sold out way too quickly. So, uh, yep, still devastated to this day with those website items that I missed out on because they were there. They didn't have to go through a reseller. You know, I was able to pay the retail price, but I missed out on them. Uh, now we're going to move on to all the items that have been available, like in the pre-loved resale market. Now, let me just say that when it comes to these, it's not just a case of, oh, I missed out on this bag, you know, but it was like $25,000. In reality, I was never going to buy it, okay? When I think about a bag that I missed out on that it irks me and it annoys me that I, um, you know, it sold too fast or I wasn't ready to buy it yet and then it sold when I was ready, that kind of situation, it usually comes into the factor of pricing. So it's got to be the right specs, the specs that I want, like the color I want, the size of the bag I want that sort of thing, but it's also gonna be the right price because in the resale market, you can pretty much get any bag that you want from Hermes, but the pricing is where it becomes an issue for me because I don't have an expendable bank balance where, you know, where I'm not a Kardashian where I can go, okay, I wanna get like that Rose Sakura Birkin 25 with Rose Gold hardware and I don't care that it's gonna cost me 30,000 USD. Um, it's not a case like that for me. So the, all the bags that I'm saying are probably available right now in the resale market, but they're not at the right price. So the ones that irk me is that they all lined up with specs, size, coloring, hardware, everything, and the price was also really good as well. So now, like I was saying, moving on to the Kelly 25, and it was in Berenia leather, which I love Berenia leather. It's a heritage leather from Hermes. And it was in the Celia style, had palladium hardware and it was listed on Anne's Fabulous Finds for 10,500 USD. Now this is actually a good price when it comes to a Kelly 25 uh, Berenia Celia. Now based on the exchange rate, I probably wouldn't have even bothered to buy it because the exchange rate with Australia is really, really bad. But at the time when it became available, it was actually, it was within reach. It was, it was affordable. But unfortunately I missed out on that because it sold too quickly. Uh, it became available, I think it was around about ooh, maybe 12 or 1 a.m. in the morning in Australia, and someone snapped that up quick fast. Of course, Berenia, Kelly 25, Celia, it is really rare specs. It is hard to get one of those bags. Um, another one that was on Anne's Fabulous Finds that irks me that I missed out on is again another Kelly 25, but it was in Celia. It was Palladium Hardware and it was Rose Pourpre. So this was again the same price. It was 10,500 USD. And that's actually, again, quite reasonable for a Kelly 25 in the Celia in a current, it was in like a current season color. It had only just sort of come out around the time that that bag was even being sold. So it was a year old only. These were all fairly new bags, the um, both the ones from Anne's Fabulous Finds. So that was a good deal. That was another case of it became available at 1 a.m. in the morning in Australia. And then I checked my newsletter that Anne's Fabulous Finds, um, they send you like pretty much an hour before the product's about to go live, but I was already asleep by that point. And the next morning it was sold, quickly snapped up, of course, at that price point and for that um, size and color of bag. Now moving on to another one is the Kelly 25 in Rose Sakura. Yes, Rose Sakura. This would almost be in my top three, this one, almost, but it's just missed out on that top three spot. Just, only just, just probably a bit more because of the price. And it was in Rose Gold Hardware, so even more special. It was Rose Sakura, Kelly 25, Rose Gold Hardware. Um, it was in Return, which is pretty much always what you see um, the Kelly 25 Rose Sakura in, is because Rose Sakura is in Swift leather, and they don't do Swift in the Celia style. And this was listed from um, one of the resellers that I look at reg regularly and have already shopped from before, JLIG99, and it was listed for 18,000 Singapore dollars. So that price, when it was available with the exchange rate, it wasn't actually too bad. It was a little bit off one to one. I probably would have worked out to be around about $19,000 Australian, but that's actually really good for a Kelly 25 Rose Sakura, especially with Rose Gold hardware. It was brand new as well. This bag does typically fetch a premium in the resale market. You will see it at least for $20,000 um, Singapore, like 20,000 SGD. So for that price, it was actually quite good. So it does kind of irk me that I didn't jump on the opportunity to buy it, but they're just the timing wasn't right. I wasn't able to afford it at the time. The next one is a Kelly 25, and it was in um, graphite and anemone. 
So it was actually a HSS bag. So that's a horseshoe stamp bag, special order bag. And it was Palladium hardware. It was in Return. Uh, yeah, it was in Return, Return, I don't know, whatever, whatever, Return. And it was listed for 15,500 Singapore dollars. And again, it was from the reseller JLIG99. So this is actually a really good deal for a HSS bag, especially in a Kelly 25 and for um, a color that's considered a neutral because graphite is a neutral and it was the anemone where the strip was the piping for that price point for a hss bag that's actually really good and i really do want to get a special order bag a horseshoe stamp bag obviously i know i'm not going to get the privilege of being able to do one at the boutique i'm not a big enough spender um especially where i am there's such stiff competition and i also don't introduce new clients to the boutique that are big spenders i don't really have a, a big friend network i really don't have a friend network like you know, in my personal surroundings, I like to only have a couple friends. That's just how I am. So um, I'm not really the ideal candidate for them to offer a special order to, unfortunately. So I definitely will end up buying one from the resale market. And that's fine. I'm okay with the fact that, you know, uh, that I have to buy the special order bag in the resale market. I just want to own a, a bag that has the horseshoe stamp. It's more of a collection, uh, collecting kind of point of view. Now, the next one is, um, again, another horseshoe stamp bag. It was a Kelly 28. It was in Raisin and Rose Azalee. It was in Celia and it had gold hardware. So it was really fantastic specs. And again, the price point on this was actually really good. It was again listed by the same reseller, uh, JLIG99, and it was 17,500 Singapore dollars. Again, with this one, I wasn't able to buy it at the time. I didn't have the funds ready to go, unfortunately. And um, when I was ready to go with it, it had already sold out. Another one is Kelly 25 in Green Mouette and it was returned with Palladium Hardware. This was actually $16,000 Australian, so it was actually a really good deal for a Kelly 25, especially in Green Mouette. Green Mouette is a very desirable neutral. It came um, in, I think it was autumn, winter 2016 to the Hermes um, first time it ever debuted and has never been back since. So it's been over four years since the Green Mouette has come back into, yeah, it hasn't come back. So Green Mouette is a very desirable color. So it does seem to fetch a, a bit of a premium in the resale market, but for $16,000 Australian for a Kelly 25, that's actually a really good deal. And this was in Togo leather too. And le everyone loves Togo leather. And this was listed by um, Femi Authentics. She's another reseller that I have bought from before. She's absolutely fantastic. So I always look at her page as well. And this one was a case of, I um, was almost ready to buy a bag. I was so close, but I don't like to sort of go, I'm gonna put down a deposit to secure the bag if I'm not ready, like 100% ready. And the next one that I missed out on was a Kelly 28. It was in Cray. It was Palladium Hardware, Retourne, uh, Return Style in Togo Leather. And it was listed for a bargain price of 13,980 Singapore dollars. Now I say this is a bargain price because this was actually, um, it was actually a C stamp, which I think, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, was last year's last year's stamp so it was pretty much a like new bag and that price for a cray um the color cray is actually really 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 good deal because cray in the resale market in a kelly 28 in that exact specs typically sells for around about you're looking at at least seventeen thousand dollars um singapore so that was a really good deal and i missed out on that because i just didn't even notice it was there i think i was i was ready to buy a bag again it was around the time that i got the constance 24 rose as a lee it was like in that kind of that time frame and i was looking to buy my bag i knew i wanted a push present for myself and by the time i noticed this bag it had actually had been two days after he listed it so it was listed by a singaporean reseller called sg dreamy collection fantastic reseller I haven't bought a bag from them yet but um i do know that they are the real deal and they do have a great they have very good inventory and very good pricing as well i get into my top three ones that i really irk me that i missed out on um this almost would have made it into the top three as well or um, almost I think it's just because it's a color black. I don't know, it's really weird. Um, I've always wanted a box calf Kelly. I still want a box calf Kelly, but for some reason the color black, I like it, but it's just got a different appeal to me. It's more like a necessity rather than something that I see as makes my heart sing. I don't know, very difficult to explain, but a Kelly 25 box calf. So this is perfect specs. You know, if I'm gonna get a box calf Kelly, this would be really ideally what I would want to get is a Kelly 25 in box calf in Celia. 
and it was Palladium Hardware and it was listed for a really good deal by um, JLIG99 and it was for 15,000 Singapore dollars, which is actually, like I said, a really good deal, especially for box calf, Kelly 25. That's very rare to find. You do not see that very often. I hardly ever see a Kelly 25 in box calf. Now into my top three handbags that I wish I had bought. And these are the ones that really irk me to this day. So they'll come up in conversations, like I'll think about them out of the blue, or I'll see one in the resale market and I'll be like, why didn't I buy the the other bag before that was for a great price. Like I'll see the same one in the resale market for a high price. So this is the top three. In the top three, I have a Kelly 25 in Return, Palladium Hardware, and it was in the color gold. So I really, I always wanted a Kelly in the gold color. I still want one to this very day. Hopefully we'll get one eventually, but this was for a really good deal. For a Kelly 25 in gold, which is super desirable, very, very desirable to this very day. Everyone wants this kind of bag. It was listed by um, Singapore reseller Your Authentic Seller, which I had bought from a couple times already before. And the price was only, I say only because this is actually a really good deal, $15,000 Singaporean. Yeah, 15,000 SGD. Typically a Kelly 25 in gold, it, in the Retourne style, in the Return style, Celia always fetches a high premium, but in Return, this would at least be about, you're looking at 18,000, even pre-love. So it was for a very good deal of 15,000 um, Singaporean dollars. And then the next one that really irks me to this day is a, this is, these next two are pretty much neck and neck. And it's a Kelly 28. It was in gold hardware and it was in the leather Shamonix. So Shamonix is essentially like a more of a matte version of box calf. It's a vintage leather. They no longer do Shamonix anymore. They no longer make it. And Shamonix, um, it was in Shamonix Natural, so it was in that natural kind of, kind of looks a bit like gold, more like more on the beigey side, the gold color. Obviously, I'm going to include a picture on the screen. So it was in the natural color, and it was listed on Rakuten Global Marketplace, which is the Japanese um, marketplace that I typically shop from. And the price was seven thousand dollars Australian. Yeah. It was an old bag, so it was it was definitely a vintage bag. It had the single hook ring, it didn't have the double hook ring, but for $7,000 Australian, that is actually a really good deal. I have seen this bag pop up in the resale market many a times, and typically it is sold for $11,000 Singaporean dollars. You can understand why this really irks me. It really annoys me that I didn't buy that bag, and I actually was in a position to buy it, but it was a case of, you know when you're actually, you're ready, like, you're ready to buy a bag, you know that you have the funds for it, um, and then you see one that isn't exactly the one that you really want to get right now, but you do want it, but it's not the one you want to get right now. And you have your heart set on, say, something else. And that's what it was a case of. It was like, I seen that bag, it was available, and I was like, it's a good price, but it's not, it's not, I'm not ready to buy this yet. I don't want this just yet. I'm really wanting to get, you know, this bag. And in that instance, it was actually, I really wanted to get my Kelly 25 in grey asphalt. I was looking for a Kelly 25, and I wanted it to be like in a neutral color that was fairly new. So the funds went to that. And then when I was actually ready to then go and buy the Kelly 28 in Shamonix, of course it was gold, gone. It was completely gone from the Rakuten website. It obviously had sold. So I'm still annoyed by it this very day. And I'm still continuing to always look at um, the Rakuten website, which is Rakuten Ichiba now. And I still never find a Kelly 28 in Shamonix for that price. Now for the number one spot, this is it probably really, it really truly isn't the number one spot, this one. And it was... Oh, this annoys me to this very day. I know that I had conversations with my friends about this, going, why didn't I buy this bag? And it really, really annoys me. And it was a Kelly 25. It was in Celia, Palladium Hardware, and it was in Vache Natural. The leather Vache Natural is extremely rare to find in a Kelly 25. You never see it. I have never, ever, ever seen again a Kelly 25 in Vache Natural. I've seen Kelly 25s in Berenia quite regularly. I see them. They're always for a premium, of course. But I have never once seen ever again a Kelly 25 in Vache Natural. And it was again a case of I wasn't ready to buy the bag. I had, like, I had the funds. I, I was actually at the time I was even looking to buy a bag. But I wanted to buy... Um, my Kelly 25 in grey asphalt. I wanted to get a new bag in, in the new colour, in the neutral colour. And also this bag, this Vache Natural bag, had uh, water spots because Vache Natural is very, it's pretty much deathly allergic to water. It will get water spots, but it does develop a patina over time and it, blend, it will blend in those water spots. Obviously not perfectly, but you just have to appreciate the character of that leather. And so that those water spots were kind of like, at the time I was like, oh, like, 
twelve and a half. It was twelve and a half thousand dollars Australian. I was like twelve and a half thousand dollars Australian. Do you know? Do I want to? Do I want a bag with water spots? You know. And my collection, my Hermes collection, was pretty much extremely small. I only had like I think, um, I think I had the Green Moet Constance at the time or something like that, and my Kelly Twenty Five and Rose Japur. And both of those bags, I wasn't a hundred percent totally in love with anyway. Typically due to like the leather or the color or that sort of thing. Um, another subject anyway, but. I knew I wanted to add my next bag and I was being, I was trying to be, get it right. I didn't want to make a mistake again. So that's why I wasn't willing to take the risk on that Varche Natural Kelly 25. I, I really regret it to this day. I wish I had just bought it because I just never have seen one ever again. So if you see a Kelly 25 in Varche Natural, in Celia, which they quite typically will be in a Celia for the Varche Natural, um, let me know because I will be amazed. Obviously, if it's for a ridiculously high premium, I'm still not going to buy it because it has to have that checklist for me. But yeah, I really, really wish I had bought that bag, but oh well, guess it just wasn't meant to be. So yeah, those are all the bags, all the Hermes bags that um, I have in my list, have in my head, that are the ones that really bother me to this day that I missed out on. I think about them, they pop up in my head out of nowhere, you know, or else, like I said, I'll see the same one in the resale market and I'll see it for a very high price and think back to the one that I seen that was the exact same, but for a much lesser price. So yeah, those are all the bags. Um, please let me know down in the comments below, what is the one bag, doesn't have to be Hermes, what is the one bag that you really um, are bothered, like you're irked about, that you missed out on buying? It could have been at the boutique, like it was available, you know, you went home to sleep on it, the next day it was gone. Uh, it could be one that you've seen in the resale market, you know, pre-love consignment stores, and you go, I really want that bag, but I just need to save a little bit more money. And then by the time you're ready, it was gone. So let me know in the comments down below, what is the bag that you think about that irks you, that you missed out on to this very day and it bothers you? Yeah, let me know down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.